Greetings, citizens. Welcome to Kong Cast, episode 15. Kong Interstellar Security Solutions would like to issue a formal apology to our own member, Kano Sinclair. We were unaware that you possessed the sensibilities of an elementary schoolgirl. We are sorry. Now, on to Star Citizen. Okay, it's uh, Comcast, November 2nd, 35th, no wait, 3040, no, 2943. And today's topic, Star Citizen. We have Laser Angel. Laser Angel as always. Kalis. This is Kalis. Angry Iron Worker. How's it going, kids? Bill the Turnip. Attention, Kong, I am Star Colonel Bill the Turnip of Clan Propane Eagle. Boojum. Well, Darjeeling. Your intros are so fucking gay. Galatamon. Oh, hey, am I here? I you suppose. are now. Dude. It's fucking Saturday, Connor. You suck. Alfs. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Pizza dog. We'll get to us later. Is and Val. Talking. Hey, back from vacation, bitches. What up? All right, so the first subject, stretch goals. So we've stretch got a reveal goal. on the 27 million. We're going to have a Banu merchant. I actually thought that was kind of interesting. Let's actually go over what we've already achieved. We hit okay. the 25 million stretch goal, which was an enhanced alpha. And basically what they're doing is they're going to use the funding to spin up remote servers faster and try to work a, a little quicker to get everybody going they also added uh, 50,000 alpha slots, which is good timing because they were out. We are currently at like um, 49,000 left. And as of last I checked, we are 10% from hitting 26 million. And that is the next goal. That goal is enhanced capital ship systems. In addition to the command and control systems they've already outlined, they're going to expand capital ship's functions, lead a damage control team to fight fires and repair key systems during battle, control internal bulkheads to slow borders and man a number of consoles like navigation and engineering. That will make commanding a capital ship feel even more immersive. Uh, Connor? Uh, laser, actually. Oh, okay, laser. I just wanted people to know that it, it was a little hairy because they saw I saw the slots on... Uh... For the alpha drop under a thousand, and then they finally flipped it over to the additional fifty thousand. I'm actually kind of glad uh, that they're going to do the extra servers. That's good news for guys like Alex and Vass, who already have ping issues. Uh, Boojum. Uh, I just wanted to add that uh, a little bit about their server structure and what this remote server thing means. Uh, the last they explained this, there's only one Galaxy server that hosts you know, the data about player inventories and locations in the single game universe. Uh, but then the actual interaction of ships is hosted by instance servers. So the idea is, is that um, you can have everyone in the same universe, but still have local instance servers so you play with people near you and you can keep pings down. Uh, it is important to note that the... Uh, I'm sorry... The alpha that's coming up will not be using the Galaxy server. Uh, maybe to track progress, but beyond that, it won't be really used. We'll probably be using uh, individual servers for uh, instancing for each of the combats, because it's going to be an arena-based combat mode. Right, I think that's likely. So the player base will be divided at first, but in the final game, there's only one universe everyone's in. Exactly. Uh, Mouse. This stretch call means that CIG is putting money into their servers. I'm looking at you, OGP. Okay. Bill? Uh, they originally talked about the co-op aspect. Is that still going to happen, or is it going to be a uh, just the one persistent universe? 
The Persistent Universe is coming much later. Um, they will probably track uh, your money because they said they're going to give us a way in the alpha beta to actually earn money to possibly buy equipment and such. Uh, Connor. I'm glad that they've added the enhanced capital ship systems. I figured they'd have something, but the fact that it's much more defined means better customization and more dynamics to gameplay. So, uh, as we uh, move back, we're uh, almost 26 million. We're very close, as I mentioned. We're 10% away. We're hoping to have it done by the beginning of this episode, but maybe by the end of the weekend. Uh, Angry Angry, you had something to say? Uh, yeah, about the, the enhanced capital ship systems. I mean, the, I mean, there's a joke running around, like, the second we hit, the second they release that, that it's, oh, it's going to be FTL, just in Star Citizen, and it's, it's gonna, honestly going to look really cool, in my opinion. Oh, I, I agree. Um, the only other game that I think has ever done, like, 3D inside the spaceships was uh, Battleship 3000 AD, which was a terrible game, and we should never speak of it again. Derek Smart, Desktop Commander. <laughs> yes. Darjeeling? There are toilets in Space Citizen, right? Star Citizen? Yes. And toilet animations. So it would be cool if, like, um, one of the capital ships things, or, like, the enhanced... Uh, Systems was like weight Plumbing. management. What are you going to do with you several thousand pounds of space? Is that a Norris plug-in? Darjeeling, what do we tell you about ship posting? Come on now. Okay, Valk. I was just gonna say it's really gonna suck ass if you have to make a you know really long trip in a Hornet. Just saying. <laughs> Everybody's so obsessed with toilets. Dude, it's gonna be in. Well, it's wouldn't you just have a space suit and just go in your space pants? All right, enough of that. So, um, as Connor mentioned earlier, uh, we have the $27 million uh, reward revealed. It's the Banu Merchant Man. Um, Ding they're a space uh merchant race. And uh, basically, their trading ship is going to be available uh, probably in-game, which I think is a really good thing. Is anybody... Uh, laser. I just wanted to bring up that there was some concern on these stretch goals. We're actually adding a lot more work, but from what Chris has discussed and what I've discussed with you guys, it's just the expansion upon an already existing uh, system. So they're gonna this ship is going to be in the game, the Banu Merchantman. However, we're not going to actually be able to use it. And this is just extending that feature onto us. And I know I've talked to Norris a few times, and he's he's under the impression that it's going to be something even larger than the Starfarer we have right now, or it's be a, like a big, huge, the big cargo ships that we're been uh, discussing about, because I know I've mentioned Star Wars oh, man. in a couple of threads, and how everyone's dedicated themselves to the Constellation. I mean, how can you have a light freighter control all the lanes in space, and then with the expansion on the previous podcast onto like the public transit system that there are Crew, like cruise ships and big freighters that the Banu might be something in that category that we can actually obtain. Do we know what the Banu look like yet? Yes, we do. Really? Um, they they kind of have a bony face. It looks like, um, like an, I don't know, uh, it just looks like bones, like dried up skin. Um, oh, shit. We can put a picture in the I was uh, hoping that thing. they would look like Jawas. They, you know, like have a sand crawler. No, no, no. <laughs> but uh, that's a, that's actually a really yeah. good point, Laser. Um, one thing I have a worry about would be: would it is it going to invalidate the Starfarer's role? Although the recent fluff we got in the uh, jump point mentioned that the Starfarer is going to uh, the material storage one is not as desirable for some reason or another. We don't know the why or how. Uh, Malfs, you had something to say? Wouldn't it be really cool if there was a bunch of alien ships in this game, like the Vanu and whatever that other one was that we unlocked? Like, you get into it, and you look at the controls, and you're like, what the fuck am I looking at? How do I pilot this? Well, they ex they mentioned that um, when we do get alien ships, like the previous one, the Car 2, the Xi'an um, scout ship, that it's going to be... Uh, fitted for humans to use. 
like yeah, the uh, like side. an actual alien one. You're like, oh god, what am I oh, looking yeah. at? You probably wouldn't be able to use it at all. Absolutely. No, you should be able to use it, but it should be like really confusing and like utterly incomprehensible. You don't know how to use the two seashells? <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Bill, you had something to say. Do I pull on the string? Well. I don't know if you guys mentioned this already, but they did say that they were going to be refitted, so they won't be as complicated, but they'll probably be a little bit more complicated than normal ships. Maybe the layout will just be completely strange and odd. That'd be kind of cool. Well, it, it'll, probably oh, sorry, be, it'll probably be unique as compared to like the other ones, because the other ones kind of have seemed to have a more common theme. It'll probably just be something that we're not really expecting, but certainly would be human usable. We do have some pictures of uh, possible um, Banu ships, but we're not sure because they're not labeled. It was uh, part of the demo reel for the anniversary, uh, the one-year one anniversary for the Kickstarter. Um, does you have something to say? As Kayla's mentioned before, there was a previous stretch goal that also unlocked an alien ship. And um, right now, as Star Citizen is, we have all these ships, but they're all made for human use. They're all made for humans by human corporations and all that jazz. But Star Citizen is a fully interactive space sim where, you know, there are alien races. And we haven't really seen much of them or their ships aside from, like, the occasional ones that we unlock through stretch goals or that they tease. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops and which ones will be playable and which ones won't. We actually did get some concept art um, from Ryla 4, which is the Xion's homeworld. It does show uh, several of their ships, and uh, we know what the they're they kind of do vertical ships, which uh, a lot of people are excited about because it's just different from humans. And we do have pictures of other ships, like we have that one picture of. The possible Vandal carrier. It's all concept, but it looks yeah, pretty no. amazing. What do you mean by vertical? Vertical meaning the ships um, are, instead of like long ways, like all uh, the human like ships are? Literally, physically vertical? Yeah. The enemy's uh -huh. gate is down. Think like... Um, the uh, slave one, I know. Yeah. Oh, kind of. Kind of. We're not starting this again. Darjeeling will have a... Or the B-Wing. In attack mode. Yeah, the B-Wing in good. attack mode. That's a really good idea. Yeah, or the new example. Uh, Connor, you had something to say? Yeah, I'm wondering if any of these races are going to have, like, th their physical Fur. properties. If they're going to be taller or are bigger. Are they going to have tails? Well, yeah. we do know they're some. They're going to be stronger. We know the, um, the Vandal are eight feet tall, which makes them quite scary to humans on foot. The reason um, why I ask this is because some of us are going to be boarders, so... Yeah, so some uh, Vandal Marines are going to probably be pretty terrifying. Uh, there's a recent picture of, I think it's a Xion fighting a Vandal. He's got his hand around his throat. It's uh, concepty, but he looks about the same size, which I was a little surprised at. I thought they'd be a bit smaller. Unless uh, someone wants to correct me. Nope. All right. Then, uh, Bill, you had something to say? Uh, yeah, possibly one of the reasons we're not seeing as much concept art or information on any of the aliens is, again, because, um, you know, exploration was such a big thing, and whatever they incorporated about uh, exploring stuff and finding new races, that's probably why we haven't seen as much as we've seen. What if, like, they're not telling us anything about the aliens because, like, when we see them in-game, it's just going to be, like, legitimately alien. We don't know what it is. Yeah, that's well, basically what we, I said. We but, do like, these aliens are already established in this universe. It's not like oh, yeah. about species. other aliens. There are other aliens that yeah. we don't even know what look like. Uh, right, right, right. Or have met. And there's supposed to possibly be a race that we have yet to meet according to that uh, exploration stretch goal. So that's pretty cool. Neat. Oh, as I was uh, saying, there's going to be a... We have a model of the Vandul, actually, in the engine. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, we could put the picture in. I have it. So, uh, moving on, we're going to go to the uh, another part of a segment we did last week. Uh, are we too gold? And You people yes. are gold. <laughs> you people are so fucking gold. You're so gold. fucking gold. 
Right and now, like, we, are, we are so gold that I suspect some of these people were molested by King Midas' children. <laughs> Pretty much. Kong HQ well, is made of solid gold. Just like, for uh, really reference... really gold if, like, the game is actually delivering on its promises? Th that's actually a nice. good point. That's actually a good point. But, um, just so people understand, when we say gold, we mean somebody blinded by the gravity Bryce of... Roberts' amazingness. <laughs> yes. The uh, <coughs> the developer can do no wrong, and we're going to dump a lot of money into it. And in this case, we're saying we have a lot of people have dumped a significant amount of money into it. Let's uh let's ask someone who's uh donated a lot. Boojum, what do you feel about being too gold? Well, I think that really the the big deal, uh, especially First coming say from how MWO, much you've donated. Oh, I've, I've donated. <laughs> let, let's just say I have concierge status, and leave it at that. Oh. Give it a number. <laughs> Show us your shame. I'd have to look it up. You want me to look it up? Are you concierge over twice or? It's over twice, but not. <laughs> oh fuck! Are you serious? Jesus. Yes, he is. You're, yes, you're serious. You double maximum gold. Let, let's let him talk. I'm really Several curious what he has dollars, to say. Traitor. Yeah, I'm a double gold. Uh, anyway, uh, the way I see it is that uh, coming from MWO, what really defines goldness and that we don't like about it is the idea of it neglecting to pay attention to faults, denying that there's anything wrong, even if there is something wrong. And I think that's really the issue here. Uh, I've given significant amounts to this, and uh, I'm not going to deny that. I have the disposable cash. I think Chris deserves it. I gave it to him. But uh, the real issue is if we start overlooking things that shouldn't be overlooked, you know, ignoring faults. And uh, we can pay attention to that going forward. That's a really good point. I mean, a lot of this isn't going to actually... We're not going to know really anything until Dogfighting Alpha. Then we'll actually have something solid to put, you know, dig our teeth into. Uh, Bill, you had something to say? Yeah, certainly with uh, the amount of money spent, um, it's difficult for people to actually acknowledge the errors because we've spent so much money, we've invested so much in it, and we wouldn't want to see that investment go south. However, there are still some people in Kong that haven't invested that much and do kind of keep people grounded as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I was just talking to someone a little bit earlier uh, uh, that's in Kong, and they're waiting till the dogfighting alpha. They want to see an actual game. They're, they're tempted. And but they're just want they want a real game before they get invested. Uh, Mouse, you had something to say? Yeah, uh, part of Boojum's thing was something about how uh, I don't remember his exact words, but he mentioned something about how we're more or less gold if there's a problem and we ignore it. If there's a problem with this game and we ignore it, and in the future something big comes out of that problem and it just gets even bigger than it was before, that's on us. If Chris like implements some kind of minor pay-to-win thing and we don't jump on to him for it and the game just turns into trash later on, that's on us because we didn't say anything. But we do say something. I think we get enough people who have their head on their shoulders, even though they're well invested, they're going to call BS if they see it. I, yeah, I and just, that's the I don't, beauty about this Because uh, like, we, we come from MWO, and you know we got abused, and we're looking for BS. Yeah, that's the thing. MWO. I don't want to bring up too much of that, but it does affect things. Uh, Valk? Oh, just regarding MWO, I will say that at least I, I'm fairly certain that Chris and, you know, uh, <clears throat> I'm fairly certain that... Uh, his company, uh, Con Imperium and uh, Robert Space Industries, that they're not going to go out of their way to go and start banning people who call them on their shit two weeks after they leave their fucking game alone. Anyway, beyond that, um, I wanted to say, I'm thinking about you know just the amount of money that people are spending on this game, and I, I don't blame them, um, but at the same time, I think one of the things that we can probably take into consideration when we say... Oh, we're, are we being too gold? You know, are we spending too much money on this? I mean, personally, myself, I only spent, you know, my I bought my 300i and then upgraded it to a 325, uh, a 320, 325a. I can't remember 320, 325, whatever. That's correct. Yes. Fire. Um. So I upgraded that, and 
that's all I did. I was very tempted to buy a Super Hornet because I loved the look of it, and I, I was thinking to myself, man, wouldn't it be so cool if I could get my Super Hornet and basically have Space Top Gun for the entirety of this you know game's existence? But I decided not to do it just because I'm not sure if I'm going to like this game as much as I think I will. Um, but for those people who are thinking, well, I'm probably going to like this game as I've liked all of Chris's previous games, flaws and all, then by all means, go right ahead. And then beyond that, there's also a mitigating factor um, that I don't think has been brought up yet, in that unlike MWO, if we buy things um, you know, in Star Citizen, we can resell them. So, for example, you know, somebody buys a Super Hornet, and then the game comes out, and they don't really like it that much, they can resell it to somebody who's golder than they are, and probably turn a profit and get their money back. It is possible. Um, they didn't mention something pretty recently on one of the Ask the Devs threads. Uh, they mentioned that the ship resale is going to be terrible, worse than cars, because ships are actually going to receive wear for being on, being used, and traveling distance. Uh, now, some of that can be recovered, but there is a finite amount that can be recovered. So your old ships are going to be old ships, and eventually you're probably going to have to retire them. Well, yeah, but I mean, if somebody's, you know, if someone has a serious hard on for the Hornet and they want to have all the variants and they never got the Super Hornet, and this guy's taken that out of his space garage all twice and kept it in perfect condition otherwise because he didn't like the game that much, he can resell that thing for $150, $200, something like that down the line, and somebody will probably buy it. Just pretend to be the the old lady that's driven it to church on Sundays and kept it in a garage and. <laughs> You'll get your use. Yeah, your space ins- your space insurance goes up if you're over twenty. If you're under twenty five. <laughs> Ugh, we buy ugly ships. <laughs> Con- Connor, you had something to say about this? Yeah, it was about the uh, the worry everyone had, and if we're over gold and everything, I- I've got a, just a little bit of something that I think will relax everyone's doubts, and that's all this game needs to be is freelancer two, and I think we're cool. Well, we're not going to receive Freelancer 2 because there's not going to be a third-person usable interface. I know, but that's not the point. Do we know that for sure? Their position, if it changes, so help me God, I'm going to just harp on that until the end of time. I think this This, is one of the ones where they're not going... What we do know is that he said that the the HUD will not be available, and without HUD elements for this kind of a game, it's basically going to be impossible to play in combat. If they end up no putting radar. a targeting reticle in for third person, that's one of the points where you decide whether you're gold or not. Because I would call BS. Yeah, I, I would. I absolutely agree with Bujum because that's the game I want. I want the game where I'm in the first person view. He's designing these interiors so you're in the first person. He's not making the game to where you're going to be flying around and seeing the outside because he feels that takes away from immersion. It's something yeah. I read. He said earlier. No auto-detect, um, no, si- no signal uh, screens. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Darjeeling. On the question of whether you guys are too gold or not, Mouse pointed out that uh, one way to tell, possibly, is if there are problems down the line and people refuse to do it. I would like to uh, posit this question to the rest of you guys. As it is now, do you think there are any problems? Do you see any problems with the game as it is now? What, is like, the game delivering what it's supposed to deliver? In development, or...? Do you see any problems in general, or is it perfect? Well, uh, I have concerns, but I have yet to see if they're addressed yet. If that's the... Because some of my, my strongest concerns are something that, you know, we have yet to see. I see a disconnect between... Uh, the development and what players are seeing and their excitation, but that's normal. Like, people are asking for some bizarre shit. Like, they want to poop in-game. Yeah, but people are strange. I'll, I'll tell you why I chose to donate. The only reason I chose to donate is because I want to play the game, number one, and then number two, I donated to purchase my ships just based on the role I wanted to play. I'm not purchasing ships based on how good they're supposed to be. I'm just ba- I'm just purchasing based on the role that they're supposedly supposed to fit. So the only thing that can possibly be um, be an issue for me is if, say for instance, the cutlass doesn't 
prove to be a pirate ship or the star fair doesn't prove to be a cargo ship. And that's really the only thing that I have looking forward um, when the game actually does come out is whether I can fill the role that I have purchased. So what you're saying is that you want your ships to have a clear and set role. Yeah. And I believe that's fairly true. Most of the ship's details, such as the engines and things like that, they were recently changed. That doesn't phase me at all. But if they do change the roles of the ships, then I'm going to have an issue with it. Well, um, recently we did... Well, we can get into that a little bit later. Um, One thing, though, from my best understanding is your role is going to... Your equipment is going to dictate your role. That is going to show exactly what you can do because your equipment is very important. Yeah, it'll show you exactly what you can do, but the ship is kind of your general role. So, you know, if you if you buy a Hornet, you're going to expect to be more of a fighter class as compared to, like, the Freelancer, which is more for exploration. Yeah. Um, well, like, the, con- the, the Constellation, for example, is a multi-role. Um, it, it can probably do a little bit of everything based on the equipment it's supposed to have. Because with RSI, they're all about adaptability and customizability. Laser, you had something to say? I agree with Bill that I see. I want to see these ships fit the role that I bought them for. I bought the Constellation because I wanted a multi-man ship with a, a snub fighter, and it looks like it has big engines and the turrets, and I, I really like that. And I was considering... A 325A, but I wanted the 315 because of the tractor beam and the jump drive. So there, there are certain exploration details, and same thing with the LX. But the Constellation, I don't really see a problem that's gone from space superiority to multi-role. I see that it has all these upgrade slots. It goes fast. I can outrun things. I know there's that big uh, blind spot in the back of it, but that's just the role of the ship. It's still a freighter, and I'm not going to expect it to do much more that until I slot it out, and then it'll be slightly better at a specialized role, but it won't be the bomber that the Retaliator is, or it won't be the Starfarer at carrying as much cargo. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Angry Ironwork, you had something to say? Uh, I kind of want to add, build on that uh, that idea of like the equipment's going to kind of choose what role your ship's going to play, because, I mean, I bought a Freelancer... And everyone's saying, "Oh, it's just an exploration ship. It's not going to be good in combat and whatever." But what I when I see it, I see like it's got good four mounted guns. It's got the missiles. It's got a little turret on the back. I can see it as like a uh, kind of like a heavy attack striker if it's built up in that direction. That's kind of that's kind of what I want to do with it. I want to like use a ship and maybe use it in a role that it's not entirely designed for, but can still perform in that aspect. Oh, yeah, the Freelancer, I mean, if you look at it, it looks like it has a pretty strong forward attack. It's got a few missiles, it's got those forward guns, plus it's got that turret. Although I do see it as more of a transportation ship, and they see it as um, like a truck, like a a tractor trailer. That's kind of how they envisioned it when they were designing it. That's what they said in the notes. So I don't think it's ever going to be, you know, your forward attack craft, but I'm sure its, its weapons will be something you'll have to actually deal with. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, there's still, like, it's the speed that I'm kind of factoring into everything. It's not going to be a slugger. It's going to be, like, a, a lancer that just flies in, does some damage, and then jets off. It's, like, it's, it's like, just flying. It's just fast attacks, like. Well, well I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, Dajili. I'd like to point out to our listeners here that a lot of us here are very fixated on the concept of, and forgive me for using this term because I know it opens old wounds, but role warfare, specifically <laughs> in Star Citizen, which is, and I know we've talked about this before, but I can't remember if it was on Comcast or just in private, but a lot of people, especially on the forums, what they want is like something that does it all, like the Millennium Falcon that's a freighter, a freighter but can also you know shoot its way out of anything as fast as ship in the galaxy, blah, 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 blah. And what we're hoping for more is that, no, there is no one ship that does everything better, that there will be ships for this sort of mission and ships for that sort of mission. And yes, maybe you can change your equipment here and there, but generally that there will be, you know, cargo ships and there will be dogfighters and the ships just won't be, you know, 
let's say, just hypothetically, different masses of tonnage on which you can all slap the same shit. But, yeah. Yeah, that's the that's what I see being an issue for most people looking towards this game, is that they think they're going to be able to do whatever they want. And in, react- in actuality, it's going to be based on how the game plays out. And that's why I'm not looking into anything individually, but I'm just kind of taking my general role as my ship. Because if I start looking into things so intently, I'm not going to be able to play the game because it's not going to be what I thought it was going to be. Darjeeling, just for the record, next time you say something like that, please be sure to you know give us a trigger warning because that's that's really harmful. I'm to sorry. Did you have a stroke, Valkyrie? No, yeah, I right. didn't. I'm just I'm just saying for for, for you got our your audience sake. nearby. Well, as far as role warfare is concerned, that is an interesting trigger concept. warning. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, the game's not just about combat. The dogfighting alpha will be for sure. But beyond that, the persistent universe is going to be about a whole lot more. I don't think there's anybody that will argue that the Hornet's going to be a good exploring ship. It doesn't have a bed to do deep, deep space hibernation saving. You don't have uh, you, you're not going to have range or fuel or anything like that. But there's some ships that are just going to be able to do a little bit of everything depending on their loadout. Uh, the 300i is uh, noted for its Adaptability. I mean, look at the different roles it can take depending on the equipment it's equipped with. Whereas you look at the Hornet and everything gives it a combat role. <laughs> you know, you got the Ghost, which is a stealth ship. You got the SWAX uh, ECM variant, which is still a combat role. And then, of course, you have the Super Hornet, which can do multi-role as well. Um, I actually want to take a moment, um, if you wouldn't mind, Boojum. We had somebody who unfortunately could not join us, but he did have an argument, and I know Boojum is familiar with it. Would you mind explaining uh, Alex's argument, if you don't mind? Uh, The one concerning uh, variants? Yes, yes. Okay, well, uh, the idea is is that uh, with such a focus in the game on being able to customize your ships through picking equipment, uh, the concern is whether you are uh, helping or hurting of the variety and usefulness of the ships in the game. Uh, the term, I think, gun bag was used. Because uh, basically each ship is a hull with a certain shape with uh, certain hard points where you slap in equipment. And the roles of these ships are going to be defined by that equipment as much as it is by uh, the list of hard points. So if there's a lot of customizability you also start bleeding over in the roles where most ships can do most roles if they're fitted properly. So there's going to be some balancing going forward, I think, over whether you are making uh, the very idea of different ships obsolete by making any one ship uh, so flexible it can do anything with the right equipment. So did anybody have anything to say versus that particular argument? No. You're, you're always going to have bleed over in in the roles, but just based on the how the ships are designed, you're not going to have complete changing in the roles. Um, you know, take Freelancer, for example, how some of the ships handled would affect how you could actually play, and that's how I feel it will probably work, is just based on how what ship you have, will give you more effective or take away from your effectiveness in the mission. I agree. I I think some of the uh, worry is that having, you know, just one variant of a ship, which essentially we have, other than the special variants, will lead to just everything being generic and there being perfect builds. My argument would be that it gives you the ability to customize the ship just to your liking. It's like the difference between role-playing games with the class-based systems or skill-based systems. One, you're set to a a specialized role and you don't have much flexibility, whereas another one you have, uh, you can suit it to exactly how you want. And they both suffer from, they both have cons and, uh, you know, pros. Uh, Angry Ironworker, you had something to say? Uh, yeah, just really quick. I think considering that this game's going to be really 
heavy on the simulation aspect. It's gonna boil down a lot to how the shit feels to each individual person. And I mean, yeah, everything's gonna be able to run the same thing, but it's still they're still gonna handle a little differently considering the mass and the shape and everything. So it's gonna it's gonna boil down to what the person likes to fly. Uh, Mouse, you heard something? Who's to say that the Super Hornet is the best at everything it does? My Cutlass is always going to be a better freighter than you, and there's going to be bigger ships out there that are better at fighting than the Cutlass. I'm going to let you know. Bigger ships that are better at fighting than the Hornet. Super Hornet's not going to do everything. The Legionnaire's not going to do everything. I'm going to give you that much. Oh, that's a good point. But uh, we've spent enough time on this. Uh, let's move on. Uh, the next is the Aurora 2944 brochure and video, which showcased the Aurora Legionnaire, which is the new model ship. Uh, it differs from the other um, Auroras a bit. It has two extra uh, Class 1 hard points on the front. And uh, there's some confusion about the upgrade slots, but it does have a bigger power plant. Um, laser. I'm going to talk specifically about the commercial, but I really enjoyed the sort of indi- indecisiveness of the shopper or the buyer that they were that was just talking during the commercial, and it really sort of pulled an Apple Apple vibe that he just eventually went with all the upgrades and then came back to the ship, and you see it in the game and how it's specifically designed to be your ship. It's what you decided, and it's only yours. <laughs> yes, there are many like it, but this one is yours. Um, the whole... The the thing about the Aurora commercial is it's a Cyan XP commercial, like completely. It, it utterly is. Uh, Mouse. There are people saying that the Legion Air is going to be an issue because it's probably going to be the best Aurora out of all the Auroras, and that there's things like gun baggery and why use any Aurora but the Legion Air if the Legion Air is the best Aurora. I just want to point out the Legion Air, sure. It might be the best Aurora, but it's still a fucking Aurora. Consider that for a minute. And it is a newer model, but um, since they're treating these like cars, uh, newer models aren't always going to be better. I mean, marketing would tell you otherwise, but sometimes they might leave features out or make it worse in other ways. As so I think it'll on, be interesting. The technology's going to improve anyway. They've specifically said they're going to phase out older equipment anyways. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, the things we're buying right now... Aren't these, like, right at the very edge of being obsolete? Aren't they going to introduce new ships very soon? That's a good question. Um, The Aegis line is aging. Um, The Avenger is almost at the end of its life uh, cycle, and the uh, patrol variants are being replaced by M50s. And who knows what's going to happen, because they, they're not selling new ships. They're selling old, refitted military ships, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Angry Ironworker, you had something? Uh, yeah, going back on the topic of the, uh, the commercials themselves, I think it speaks a lot to uh, Chris Roberts and this uh, CIG that the three commercials that we have, the three actual commercials for ships we have, we have, I mean, the Aurora, the 300i, and the Hornet, they all come off as... 100% in universe car commercials and it's it sounds like a lot of a lot of praise for them but it it definitely helps with the like the progression that they're going with the uh with the universe yeah um i i really like how they're uh doing them as different car commercials like you know the 300i was some sort of sports luxury car you know and then the aurora uh Legionnaire, that Aurora commercial is more, you know, like the Cyan XB. It's all about making it yours and all that. Uh, Mouse. Wouldn't it be interesting to be in a space bar and you're looking at the TV watching space football and it goes to halftime and there's a commercial for the newest Aurora or something on the television and you've never seen it before? <laughs> that's pretty cool. Hopefully that's how they're going to deliver it to us. Uh, right now, we have the Aurora commercial playing in the uh, hangars. Uh, all the commercials are actually in the finals, but that's the only one that plays as of currently. Uh, Laser? I just wanted to mention that I believe the commercial that plays inside our hangar is at a much higher frame rate than the one you see online on YouTube or Vimeo, because it looks a much, much smoother. 
they did a really good job with the Aurora commercial. It's got a good vibe to it, and it shows off the Aurora, and it makes people want it, which is all the commercials really meant to do anyway. Um, Mouse? Uh, the Aurora commercial, it kind of reminds me of like somebody you'd be a roommate with, like a college student. Yeah, someone new uh, getting started once their first spaceship. Well, yeah, so. that's the idea. It's a start. The, the Aurora is a starter ship, so it makes sense to kind of pitch it to people who would be just getting out of college or you know exiting the military, or whatever. And they're buying their first car for the first time. Is that what you're I, going for? I don't know what Kalos is going for, but it just kind of sounds like someone you'd live with. Anyway, uh, one thing I wanted to point out about the Legionnaire that I thought was, uh, we know it has four Class 1 hard points and one Class 3. Um, that would give it a lot of weapons. I would give it a significant amount of weapons for a little ship. I think people are going to have to be a little careful of their oars, because it might be a Legionnaire or something like that. But, uh, you know, we'll have to see what happens. We are going to talk a little bit about the flight system alpha, or the ability to go into the f- flight pad and switch the files around so you can actually fly around the Hornets or other ships. Um, I don't believe that is the flight model they intend to use. I believe it is a default crisis thing that they're using at the moment. And the last patch actually kind of broke it a little. Um, the animations are all screwed up, so the flying is... Mm, a bit off. Laser? I enjoyed the simplicity of just swapping the hangar app folder to the ship's Illum, and it also showed us a little pad that we saw, because we have this little gif going around that's from the Citizens Con one-year anniversary clip, and it shows four or five seconds of dogfighting combat, and in the back, you see this little golden square, and you're like, what the heck is that? And then you swap the folder names around, and you're like, oh, this is what was there all along. And you have the little asteroids, and the Earth there, and I know we have a couple of other gifs where we show off all the laser bolts and the shells. <laughs> yes, there are astro- there's a small asteroid field right next to the flight pad. In oh that man, particular I'm going to do that after this and like, shoot asteroids for fun. For those, you of you ship, may, for those of you who may want to do it, uh, you don't have the ability to do it as of currently. Um, they took that demo folder out unless you have a backup of the previous uh, patches files. Mouse has two ships, doesn't he? He doesn't just have. I've a, got the Aurora, and I've got my yeah. freaking sweet statue. Uh, that's but you don't actually corner. need a ship to do that. You could have no. Yeah, ships you can edit in there. ships. I know. Yeah. All right, moving on. We have the Squadron Forty Two information from the Wingman's Hangar Number Forty Two. Uh, they told us a few details about Squadron Forty Two. Not a lot. Um, I'm running a little. Uh, Try on the information right now. Uh, Boojum, do you remember anything? Well, just in general, they talk about um, the campaign and what you can and can't do. A lot of the questions are about its relationship to the premises and the environment. Uh, we know it'll have a branching campaign and that uh, the relationship you have with your wingman is going to be a big deal. Uh, but no romance, so this isn't Bioware. Yeah, they don't want to do any spoilers or anything. Uh, one thing we know, they do have this relationship system where depending on the uh, wingman or whoever you cultivate the relationships with, it can affect the whole story. And it is supposed to be a branching campaign similar to Star Lancer, as in if things happen differently, the whole storyline can change. Um, I believe Wing Commander 3, you could actually end with no wingman. <laughs> they could all die. Uh, Mouse? Wouldn't it be horrible if, like, your relationship with your wingman, if there was this one guy that really hated you, like, just one day, when you're in a dogfight, and there's someone on your tail, and you're like, Bimmy, help me! And he's like, no, Mouse, fuck you. And then you die. <laughs> well, you know. Good story. <laughs> that might actually work. Uh, another thing we know is they did confirm it again. You will have drop-in co-op. Uh, people will be able to take over your wingmen during your missions. So that's a really cool feature, I think. Yeah, that was what I was talking about earlier. If they were going to have that um, be available for, like, you know, at the end of Freelancer, how you were able to free uh, freely Lance? go about your universe. If you can do that co-op with your friends and freely go about your own little universe instead of being in the persistent universe. 
Uh, you can run a private server. server if you want. Yes. All right. So if you want to do that, you could do anything in the private servers. They said they don't care. Uh, one thing they mentioned recently, though, is they're going to update all the servers. That was a little surprising. So the persistence or the private servers are actually going to receive all the updates, the new ships, the new technology, the new discoveries. Um, some of the storyline stuff may be locked out, but for the most part, they're going to put have, give you a different version. Mouse? On the subject of uh, co-op, there are, well, I don't know about like cooperatively playing, but you can have your buddies drop in on Squadron 42 as some of the enemy ships and like these guys. No, that was never confirmed actually. And in fact, they said it's not going to happen. It was something that the fan base got excited about because it was mentioned that maybe they might be able to work something out, but I'm pretty sure there was something recently that they said that's not going to happen. Ouch. At least not yet. You know, the, there could be some problems with that, you know, that escalated quickly. (laughs) All right. Next, uh, we have the Hornet variant sale. Um, we had three uh, new Hornets come out, as well as the F7C. We have the F7C uh, S, which is the Ghost. That's the stealth variant. We have the F7CR, which is the Tracker SWAX ECM variant, and then of course we have the Super Hornet, which is the limited edition ship. And it's got two more days to get that ship. Um, it uh, has a secondary uh, cockpit that can fulfill a lot of different roles, they said. They mentioned you could have someone take care of your sensors, someone could take care of the hornet or the turret, or you could even fly from the back, because it does have a joystick back there. And uh, on top of that, you could maybe even put a prisoner for a bounty back there. I know you guys have something to say about the hornet. I like the design of the Super Hornet a lot more than the original. Uh, laser? I wanted to grab deal, but I decided against it. I'll just earn it in game. Th- that's a good idea. You know, I-, I don't have a hornet myself, and I think I'm going to wait in game myself to see it. I just figure I'm going to be flying that thing a lot in the Squadron 42, and then after that, you know, I'll probably be a little bored of it. Yeah. Uh, the laser, the laser pistol is my toy. You guys have your Connie, everything else. I've got my laser pistol. We can earn that in game, so it's not going to matter. I know, but I'm going to be boarding, so I'm actually going to be using it habitually. Well, it takes all kinds. I know. Uh, one thing we got as well with the variants, we got the commercial, which had a little bit of controversy and had apparently be redone a bit because people complained it didn't have enough combat. It wasn't exciting enough. I saw it as a basic truck commercial. It showed off the Hornet, and it basically made the other ships look really stupid. Does anybody have any comments on the commercial? Was it didn't have enough horrible country, and just believe me, I'm from Texas. Um, It didn't have enough horrible country and hay barrels, uh, hay bales, to be a truck commercial. Just saying. And leather gloves. Yeah, and people in cowboy boots and shit, and some guy with true grit talking over it. (laughs) <laughs> and dust, lots of dust. <laughs> yeah, I think we talked about the uh, reaction to the work in progress one, not the actual finalized one. Yeah, the final one actually had somebody getting shot down. Yeah, it wrecked that 300i pretty quickly because he just got behind it and he didn't decide to turn or move or evade. <laughs> but it was a good commercial. Uh, if you haven't Ooh. seen it, there's a YouTube doubler out there with a good song for it. And, uh, I think improves the quality of the commercial quite a bit. Hey, let's were those shots fired? Trying to defend your 300i there. <laughs> I do have a liking for the ship. Uh, Angry Ironworker? Uh, I was just going to say about the YouTube doubler, and it's it it does massively improve the commercial. It's <clears throat> kind of weird how much the song matches up with the commercial itself. It's really spectacular. And we'll definitely put the link in there. Laser? I know that Connor mentioned this about the work in progress, but I didn't have any problems with the work in progress and the lack of combat. He mentioned, I know Connor mentioned that it was like watching a Hummer or a Humvee come off the battlefield in one scene and fade into driving into your driveway in another. 
That's exactly what it's supposed to be. It's because it's it's paramilitary that's going to the civilian and commercial. And then your wife comes out with the credit card bill going, you spent how much on gas? Protecting your freedom to protecting the ones you love. Uh, we just finished talking about the Hornet. Uh, October 22nd, hanger patch, the privateer skin. I don't have one. Laser? I didn't like the hair. I really did not like the hair when you swapped to the privateer skin. It just looks weird seeing the bald guy now with hair on him. It's probably not final. Wait until they introduce the female avatars and the bald guy just gets boobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he gets. He just gets a giant rack of tits. Well, we saw all those uh, bounty hunter uh, models, and all the women were very scantily clad and very, very edgy. Very edgy, five me. Yes. Like, I could see it for maybe a border, out of uniform and out of G-suit. Because that would be some pretty crazy shit. But some of them are like, you know, they're behind a keyboard and they're sitting down all the time. I don't know if I buy all right, so uh, next we have the Wingman's Hangar 44. Uh, we ha- we already learned a little bit about um, the game. The, the forum feedback I thought was particularly interesting. Um, one of our own actually got his question on the show. Uh, Norris, he had asked about the Aurora and whether or not the top loader was actually going to be used. Because in the original brochure, it mentioned that the top was going to be used for cargo, possibly. And if you look there, it does seem to be something there to load the cargo on, too. But we did not see that. And they stated that, no, it is not. Apparently, it was a mistake on their part. So during the uh, Wingman's Hangar 44, we also learned that the Legionnaire um, is definitely going to be different from the other Auroras. It's going to have those two extra hard points, which the other ones are never going to be able to duplicate at all. You can't go from an LX, an ES, an MR, or even a CL to an LN. It's just not possible. The same thing with the three hundred, the three fifty R, and how the the twin TR three hard points. You can't just convert a base uh, three hundred I hull into the three fifty R. Yeah, like the super, uh, the other Hornets can never have the second uh, seat like the Super Hornet. Uh, Connor. Yeah, can we talk about the uh, that bomber hard point, the one that says beam? Uh, that's actually in the Retaliator artwork uh, that a couple of us received. Um, the uh, we learned a little bit about a little more about the Retaliator because we got some concept art. Uh, a lot of people have seen it already, so we I guess we can discuss that. Uh, the Retaliator art showed a couple different things. So it showed some interesting uh, escape pods for the pilot. They kind of scoop up and roll over them and put them in some sort of form of shell and fire them out the front, which we thought was really interesting. Um, the uh, the bomber bays had options. You could either put an apartment option in there or the retractable beam mount. Is that what it was called? Laser? Oh, I just wanted to mention that the escape pod concept sounds a lot like with the B-1B Lancer, where it, it is this like folding shell that goes over the cockpit and the pilot shoots out. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, Boojum, did I miss anything on that? Uh, in the art, it is called a retractable beam gun module, and uh, that is the first we've heard of, of beam weapons uh, after we'd previously been told not to expect them, so this is interesting. I'm wondering if it's like a, a large mount. Replace bombs with a cannon. It is an, It is very early concept, so beam might not necessarily mean what we think it means. It right. could just be a cannon mount, or a, a class 1 mount or something, or maybe a class I'm 2. I'm hoping, though, because that could be grab-dealable. Right. There <laughs> is a chance that they're talking about a retractable beam that is a gun mount, but I don't know. It was done by uh, one of the concept artists, so... We'll have to wait and see on that. But uh, it did bring a lot of depth to the ship and made it uh, a lot more interesting, I think. Added a lot more details where we didn't see any before. And uh, it looks pretty interesting. I can't wait to see. It looks like it's going to be a pretty dangerous ship. Uh, And finally, on the Wingman's Hangar 44, uh, they mentioned we're going to have music in the dogfighting alpha. I know Laser's very excited about this. uh, I want the soundtrack. I've played a game 
that was in beta for about a year and over. I'm ready for some frickin' music. Same. Yes, yes. Well, I think we all want some music, because um, I love uh, the guy who's doing all the uh, music with that Czech or- orchestra. He did the music for the 300i commercial, the Aurora commercial, as well as the Hornet commercial. As well as the um, the menu music as of currently. Give yeah, the launcher for music. When, yeah, for when you start it. Give them a um, plug. So they're actually... I. Yeah, Laser's going to have to put in the link. But uh, I can't remember his name. It's like Pedro something. Pedro. It's uh, it's fantastic. I love the music. Uh, the Hornet commercial music was pretty amazing. Uh, it, it just worked really well. Pedro Camacho, I think. That sounds about right. Sounds yeah, about Pedro right. Macedo Camacho. Yeah, that definitely has been nice to see that they are actually you know, working on multiple things at once. And that's that's the one thing that I can say I, that's shown to me that they're actually doing that. Yeah, the whole module concept is a fantastic idea. They're almost working on different games at once. <laughs> they I'm have one gonna... team working on the FPS variant. You have one team working on the dogfighting, one working on the planet-side level design. I mean, it's really interesting. He's got so many studios working together. I don't think anything like this is. It just kind of shows you what competent development teams and management can do. <laughs> yes, yes. Pedro's worked on Fairy Tale Fights, Ghost Pirates of Vuju Island, uh, Sacred Two, Xeno Clash, and I'm trying to find the last. One. Oh, Audio Surf. Ooh, Audio Surf. Uh, it looks like he's been around. That's all I've got on that. I guess that's it for this week then. All right, well, this has been Concast. We'll see you in uh, hey. however the hell long we're... Oh, you go ahead. Fine. We had my outro, you faggots. Uh, eh, 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 watch your words. Well, laser's editing it out anyways. Nah, keep this in. This should be our ending. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to Comcast. Tune in next time for your chance to win an all-expenses-paid exclusive tour of a Sogo Range apartment. Speedo included. Ha ha! And remember, until next time... Bowie is love. Bowie is live. Warning. Sago Rain's apartment may cause nausea, heartburn, headache, radiation poisoning, alcohol poisoning, prescription drug overdose, radiation burn, syphilis, gonorrhea, and death. Speedo sold separately. Consult your doctor before use.